desktop now. <laughs> All right. Wow, that was fun. Okay. So Adobe eSign. <laughs> this is my test account. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Terry. Okay, awesome. Now, the concept here is that you can get documents signed and they go through this signature process. So um, I can, in the interface, so this is just, you know, not doing anything with Flow yet. I'm just showing you what the interface looks like in Adobe eSign. So I'll just like drag this random document in here and I'll just say, I want, um, let's see. Oops. It's a test account. Um, you can add multiple people and then um, get type of message. This is just the name of my file that I uploaded. And then um, I could preview it. I'm just going to send this and just see what it looks like just out of the box. Now I'm going to go over to this other account and check the email. Oh, scripts. My, okay. So I, I, I happened to just upload some document that had something weird in it. All right. That's fun. I'm going to open word and create just a blank document and that we'll, we'll just use that. All right. So word blank document, this, is stuff to sign. Watch this equals I put a bunch of random text in it and I'll just save it to my desktop. Okay and then now it's saved to my desktop so it's just a random document and I'll upload it here and send it to that email address. There we go. I can choose whether to pass word protect it. And it's putting demo use only on this because this is my developer account for Adobe eSign. So that's kind of just one of the restrictions that um, I've got. So I sent something for signature. I'll go to my other account and it says, please sign. So I put this company policy in here, click here to review and sign. And then the person receiving it doesn't necessarily have to have an Adobe account but they will um, be able to go click to do a signature. Let me go do another one real quick before I go sign that one. I put, let's see, where's that demo file? Of course I uploaded the wrong file. Okay, admin. It's just, this is just a simple one first, a very simple document with just that text that you saw in it. Okay, and then the person gets their email and please sign it and click here to review and sign. So the idea is that you'd automate this. So this is of course letting you know that it's just a test account and um, I'm clicking to sign it. So it's putting my name in here. So now I've got an official e-signature on there. And so this is the person receiving. It doesn't have to have an account. They're just getting a document and they're signing it and they can download a copy and stuff like that. So, um, and then when I am managing my files, I can see that this, um, this is stuff to sign. That's the name of the file. And I can see all this information about it. I can manage it. I can, um, see the, uh, the signature on it, download it, get a PDF, stuff like that. Okay. So let me get to the gist of what we're doing. Um, in flow, we have Adobe eSign actions. So we can, um, I'll just do a new, just kind of show you what these actions look like really quick. So I'm just going to type Adobe 
and go to Adobe Sign. And so this is the list of actions. You have this concept of a template, which is um, a, like a template document of something that you do all the time that has a standard look to it, where you can actually upload and manage templates in Adobe eSign. And agreement is just like that document I just did where I wrote this is stuff to sign and just put all the text. Agreement can just be anything. It can be, it's just going to take some file and make an agreement out of it and then let you let people sign the bottom of it. Or when you send it, you can actually pick, when you send it in the interface, you can pick where the signature is. Um, so an agreement is what I would be doing to just take a file out of SharePoint and send it through Adobe eSign to somebody to sign it. So um, you can create an agreement from an uploaded document, get a document from an agreement, get a list of all the agreements. So we don't, we don't have time necessarily today to go through all these concepts, but I did want to walk through just a whole flow of taking a document out of a library and sending it through an approval process. So the concept I'm going to have is company policies here. So I've got just this document library with, um, that's going to be used for policies and it's just a document library with a bunch of files in it. And I want to be able to run a flow that will, um, just send it to be approved, send it to get, to get signed. Basically it's a policy. And when somebody uploads a new policy, I want it to, um, go for e-signature. All right. So let me go to my, so this is the flow that I started. Um, go back in here, request e-sign for file. So what I'm going to do is instead of for selected file, I'm going to just do when I upload a new file. So the for a selected file was giving me some weirdness earlier. So uh, I'm going to say SharePoint when a item is created. I'll just say when, yeah, when an item is created and then I'm going to point to my policies library. Policies. Uh, what? Oh, I put item is created <laughs> instead of file. I'm trying to hurry and I'm making all these silly mistakes. So file, when a file is created, there we go. And what library policies, and I don't care about what folder it is. And then I want to get that file's properties when it's created. And then I want to go get the content of that file when it's created, because I'm going to need to have the content of it in order to send um send the file you know to go get to go get a signature i need to have like the what is in the file the actual contents of the document so i'm going to use um id and then um so what the first adobe action that i'm doing is upload a document and get a document id but i noticed that for some reason this is just a little bug i'm working around this has worked in the past, but I got the file content, but the file content is not showing as dynamic output for some reason. So this is my little workaround that I use in flow when um, I come across something like this that's missing in dynamic content. I created a little compose action and see, this is what I wanted, the file content. So I'm basically, it's kind of like a variable. I'm just dropping this file content into this compose. Again, this is a workaround, so I'm not sure what's wrong as to why this, it usually shows file content here to select from, but yeah, yet another fun technical challenge this morning, right? So I'm, I get the, I upload the document and get the document ID. And then, so you have to do that before you can create agreement. So, cause when you create an agreement, you need to already have the document ID. So that's why you're doing the upload the document to actually put the document in the Adobe eSign system. And then, um, then you need to send it out for, um, to get signed. So for agreement name, I'm just going to put the name of the file that I uploaded just from the, just the file properties for document ID. That's easy. That's just from Adobe eSign. It can do an e-signature or a written signature. I've never tried the written signature option. I'm not sure what that means. Um, 
and then recipient email. So in, in my little system here, I have a policy owner and I want the policy owner email address to be the one that it goes to. So to keep it simple though, I, um, I think I'm just going to type an email address in here because I, <laughs> I created, I made my flow so that it triggers when an item is created an item's not necessarily going to have a policy owner when it's created. So I'm just going to put my name in here for now, I'm trying to keep it really, really simple not throw in a bunch of extraneous factors. We've had enough of those today, right? So you can pick a field from SharePoint. So it has a dynamic person to send the agreement to for signature. Recipient signing order, it tells the order in which this recipient signs. And then are they a signer, approver, acceptor? So you have all these different things that you can, different roles that you can give them. I usually just use signer, but then look at this. You can have a whole bunch of, you can give what message you want to send to them. You can put the name of the document here, dynamic content. I can say, um, please review and sign this policy. And then you can even give them a deadline. So I could do, you know, some action and flow that calculates, um, you know, seven days from now or something and give them a deadline as to when they need to have this policy signed by. And then it will automatically send them reminders um, about it. So that's the reminder frequency. Um, you can give it a password if you want. You can have um, put multiple documents in here. So that would be if you have um, multiple documents that are you want to be one agreement. So it'd be like multiple documents would combine together, all the pages would combine together to be one agreement. And then you can have multiple recipients. So these would be all the different, if you had different people signing it through a whole approval processes, process, you'd put all those people in here in order. And you can even have um, form fields. We're not gonna get into that necessarily just yet, but each person can have a role as you add all those people. So let me just save that. So then, now that I've created an agreement, what I wanna do is I need to wait till it's signed. So I'm going, I'm going to add a loop. Y'all, you all can't hear me, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yes, you might be the only one who can't hear anything. <laughs> so I'm going to do a do until. Okay. So do until, so I have to wait until the document is signed. So I'm going to say do until, until the status of the document. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have to get the status first until the status is signed. So since I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need the status, the first action I need to put in here is to get the status. So that's Adobe. Adobe eSign, get the status. Get the status of an agreement. Because then I want the workflow to wait to find out what the status is before it moves on any further and like converts it to a PDF or puts anything in SharePoint, right? So I need to get the status of, so remember I created an agreement. I need to get the status of, I need the agreement ID. See, it matches agreement ID. And then until the, let's see, status, the current, see I'm in, in this little section here. Let me go F11, there we go. This little section called get the status of an agreement and I go down to the status, the current status of the agreement. So this one, you just have to, this one I played around, I, I tested this. It took me a while, you know, for this customer that I was doing this for, it took me a while to figure all this out, but you have to type signed in all caps. So until the status is equal to signed. So then 
once the status is equal to signed. And then um, one thing what I'm going to do is wait. So I'm just have to, I just have to do until and just wait. So I'm going to say um, um, schedule. I'm just going to say delay. Uh, three minutes or something. Now what I was doing in between here um, for testing purposes is I was actually, um, you could create, I was doing create a SharePoint list item right here in between so that every time, this is for testing, so I could see what it, what was going on in the loop. So every time it would wait another couple of minutes, it would um, look for the status and then it would create an item in SharePoint just kind of letting me know that it was still going and it was still waiting. So um, I don't have to do that. That's something that you could potentially do. So I get the status, then I wait a few minutes. And then, no, Steve, once it's signed, like once the person signs, so you saw the interface where I actually, the, the person gets the email and they click the document and they click the pretty little yellow thing that signs it for them, that automatically triggers this and puts the status of signed. So that's just, um, the way I tested that to figure out what the status was supposed to say was I just um, did an action of get the status and I put a specific agreement in there just to kind of look in the log here and see what the status said so I would know it was signed. You'll see, we'll, we'll run it. Okay, so then um, what you can do is get, I want to get a PDF of the signed agreement. Now you don't have to do this. This is just just a little fun, you know, showing you what all you can do in here. So Adobe and get a PDF. So it was a Word document. So that's what people do often, right? Is they'll get the thing signed and get it converted to a PDF. So it's, that's the official version and nobody can mess with it. So I need the agreement ID then. And, um, I could even have supporting documents if I wanted to and an audit report, which would let me know um, additional information. I'll just see what that looks like about the process that that file went through. All right, and then um, get the PDF, but then if I want the PDF to be in SharePoint, I have to do the create file. I have to go actually create a file in SharePoint. So create file in SharePoint and I'll go back to my um, policies. I don't need a folder path. Oh, let me just go to my library here. That's a weird interface. There we go, policies. And then my file name will just be um, I'll call it signed. I'll just put the word signed in it in front of it. Just so that um, put agreement name. And then the file content has to be the content of what got spit back when I got the PDF created. So it's a good bit to know and kind of have to understand how the how all these moving pieces work to get just to get this to function. And um, so that's why I thought I'd do a demo of it. Okay, so let's try it out. Now I have this one of files created, so let me go back to my library. Drum roll. Okay, so now I've got, let me get some just dummy new file here. Make sure I don't already have it in here. Just double checking. Then my, then my library decides to crash. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I don't have that file in here yet. So I will add that. So it's uploading a new file. So my after actions review. So that should be triggering the flow to run. Let's go see. Okay, it failed. Fun. Get file content, file not found. Oh, that's an interesting one. Never seen that happen. Mm. 
See, it's not. It hasn't even gotten to the Adobe stuff yet. It's just telling me file not found. Let me see. I'm going to get my file content of, I'll just use the file identifier. I think I used ID and I need the identifier. I would think that would be the same thing. Let's try it again. Is the video messed up for everybody or just Larry? Okay. Okay, I'm testing it. Ooh, upload a document, get a document ID. So create an agreement. So now it has sent the email. So let's go see, look at that. So that file was called after actions review. And so this is my email account that it sent the file to. So look at that. So click here to review and sign. So that has worked so far. So then I can go, so this is my file and I go to the spot. It just, if you don't have a specific signature spot, it just takes you to the bottom of the file. So see, I just signed the file and I'm done. So that's the end user that's receiving the thing to sign. And they, so that's the interface for that. So let's go look at the workflow now. Okay, so now I got um, an email to myself. So I'm logged in as Allie, like creating this workflow. And Allie just got an email from Adobe saying um, that, and I just put like, that was the name of the company, the fake company that I created when I created this dev count account. It's signed and filed. So it's letting me know that the person it sent the, the agreement to has signed it. So that's an automatic email that I get from Adobe. All right, so then my flow is still running. And remember it's waiting it's, it's waiting till the person signs it. So it's waiting a few minutes. So now it's waiting three minutes. So while um, we're waiting for that, let's go see um, some, so some of the other concepts in here are the fact that you can create a template. So I, the time that I was going to spend this morning trying out the template concept was the time that I ended up troubleshooting all these technical issues. But I did create a file that could potentially be used as a template. So I kind of wanted to, that's, you know, kind of I usually spend like the last 10 or 15 minutes of power hour kind of trying something that I hadn't tried before just to see what happens. So this is something that I have done already and I have done for a customer and I know that works. So th this is just a simple concept you're taking a file from SharePoint, you're sending it out to get e-signed, the file gets officially signed by some one or more people, and then it's going to generate a PDF and put it back in SharePoint. So that's the basics, that's what that one's doing. So the other concept that I wanted to try out would be taking a template and having like this company policy and this just generic template and going ahead and see if I can get somebody to just fill out like a list item in SharePoint and have it actually put the fields in the template. So that part I'm not positive about. Do, do, just while we're waiting for this to go, does it, do any of you in the chat, have you used Adobe eSign? And do you have any insight into any of these concepts or um, let's see. Okay, Stuart says, I have a Word template document, a library. I currently manually create a new document. The metadata columns in the document library feed the fields in the template, including the emails for signatures, which he's also filling in manually. Then he uses Adobe eSign to send it out for signatures. He's trying to figure out a way to use a Power Apps form to collect data, then have a flow, create the document library, and send for signatures. Okay, so... Yeah, Power Apps does probably have an interface to use that Adobe eSign connector. Um, 
we're not going to delve into power apps, but I, I think the concept that you're saying is the same thing that I was talking about. So this concept of having a form somebody fills out and have it just, this is maybe what the text needs to be in your company policy and have it actually generate the document. I'm pretty sure that's what a template is for in here. Anyone have any um, experience with templates in Adobe? Let's go see how this is doing. Still running. Oh, no, it, it finished. Okay, so let's go see. Let's go to my library. It just finished and didn't refresh itself. I think, let me see. Oh no, it's still running. And that is why I put that little logging thing inside of a loop because you can't get into the loop when uh, when it's running. It's one of those things with the interface that you can't click in it. So that's why I had gone that extra step, like I said, when I was doing this for a customer where um, I was actually logging to SharePoint what the status is. So let me go add that. I, I know now why I did that. Okay, so I will um, do until. So Dobina, do you, do you use the template in Docu, DocuSign for kind of what I just described? Is that what it does? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, my site got a test. list. I'm going to say the title is the agreement name and I'm just going to say the con this is just a dummy list that I have and I'm just going to put the status agreement name status and that way I'll be able to see what the status is when I'm waiting for it. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to do another file and go sign it. And then we might have time to go look at the templates thing. Maybe they changed the verbiage of what a status is called since last time I did this. That would be odd though. All right, so I've got my library again and I've got another, let's see, file called. Oh wait, look, no, there it is. Hold on, it just appeared there. It just doesn't have a dot p it finally went it just doesn't have a dot pdf so when i did the file name see you see that it worked holy cow when i did the file name it did create file see i just didn't put the dot pdf that's what i missed dot pdf yep that's all it was all right so now that i've done that i'll just go add one more Okay, so I will go add annual marketing report. That should be pretty simple. And then while I'm waiting for that to trigger, let's see. Go keep an eye on that email. Okay, while I'm waiting for that to trigger, let's go look at that template concept. So manage. Um, go to the manage screen and I've got this concept of templates. Let me see. Add template to library. Okay. And then in the meantime, I did get my please sign email about that annual marketing report. And so I'm going to go e-sign that. Got it. So easy. Done. 
Okay, so now the end user signed it. And now the workflow is going to do the do until thing. All right, so the template name is going to be um, company policy. I'm going to try this company policies thing. We may go over a few minutes, but I kind of want to see this working. And let me close this file I have open. So it's just a generic, um, it's a Word document. So I uploaded the file and now it lets you add fields to it. Okay, and then I'd want to do like data fields think this is what you do, Dobina, let me know if this is wrong, this seems right. So I've got like the policy name, policy department, um, and I've got, I guess this lets you do like the whole body. I, I, I created a very large multi-line text field in SharePoint. So this would be like the body of the policy. In this document and I'll add a signature to so there's some signature fields so I can do a signature signature block signature block has say a bunch of stuff with a signature and email and I can do information about the signer so I can put the person's title down here um, the date so save that's my template okay so there's my template and I put some fields in it. And so now let's go look how, see how that workflow is doing that I already started. <laughs> Unsupported media type. That's a new one. I must just uh, be uploading just these weird files. Let me just do a different one that's Good Lord, I mean, what kind of weird macros or something do I have in my files that I'm putting in here? All right. Good to know, though. All right, I'm adding another one. That one's called This is Stuff to Sign. Copy. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like um, files with any kind of weirdness or macros or some unsupported media in them. All right, so I'm gonna sign it really quick. Same thing. Sign, apply, done. Okay, let's let the workflow keep going. Okay. And it should be running again. Okay, that one is the annual marketing report. Oh, also, if it is creating, um, this is int this is important. If it's running every time a file is created, I don't want it cre running when those PDFs get dropped in there, right? then you'd have this loop. So I need to make sure that it's only going to do all this when it's not a PDF, right? Or I'd have to go put the PDF somewhere else. So I'll have to say, um, do a condition. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'll just do file name. Probably just be easiest to put it in a different um, place. File name with extension. Does not end with PDF. If it does not end with PDF, then I want to do all this stuff. Right? Does that make sense? So I'm glad I noticed that. That's probably why it got confused when it got triggered a minute ago. Oh, 
logic. <laughs> okay, so that way this next one that gets generated won't trigger a flow also. Okay. Let's see what this one is. This one is the... Okay, this is the one that I'm waiting for right now. All right. Okay, so now we have this template created. So let's do another. I'm just going to open flow in another window. I don't want to just sit here waiting for the, the flow. So I'll do another new one. I always just skip this thing. And then um, I will say um, my trigger is going to be um, just, I'll just do a manual trigger just to keep it simple. This is just for testing, just so I can actually type like the ID of a file, just for it to run it on that file, because I'm not going to mess, I don't want to mess with a trigger. I don't want to add another trigger to the same library. So, okay, so let's go to Adobe. Actually, sorry. I will do a different trigger. That was just, that, was, that one's too weird. Okay, when an item's created, and I created a SharePoint list called policy form. So an item's created in there. Go to Adobe. Now I have not tried this yet. So let me type. Um, Create a not no, I'm not creating a template. I'm creating an agreement from a template. Yeah. The name of the agreement is going to be my policy name field in the SharePoint list. Document library template is this one that I created called company policy. Notice they have, oh, that's a really good idea. They have W4s and I9s in there that you can just use and put your own fields in. That's really cool. Um, signature type, e-signature, recipient email. Again, I'm just going to, for testing purposes, I'm just going to type my test account in here. And then recipient role. Okay, so here's where um, what's the message. See, you've got these form fields, but I didn't give the I didn't give them names when I was creating that template. So I'm not sure how that matches up. Oh, I have to put the name of the I have to name of the field and the value and the name of the field the value. Oh, okay. So let's go back to my template, go manage and templates. So here's my document template. And what did I call these? So this is, it's just called custom field one, custom field two, and I'm sure there's a way to rename these custom field three. Okay. Custom field one, two, and three. All right. Okay, so custom field one. And then the value that goes in custom field one is going to be the name of the policy. Policy name. Okay, form field name two is just custom. And again, I'm sure that there's an interface in Adobe that lets you rename these and not have custom field one through 100 or whatever. Okay, and then the next one is going to be the um, department. Let's see. Policy owner department. And then the next field is going to be the 
um, the custom field three. And that's going to be that whole, that text of the whole policy itself. So let's go look at that SharePoint list and it's called policy form. Policy text. So let's let it, see if it has policy text in here. Yeah, policy text. All right, so policy name, department, and text. Um, okay, so it's, let's see, from template, let's see, policy from template. Okay, so that first action is just creating an agreement from a library template and sending it for signature. So let's just try just that because we are over time. And so I just saved that. So let's go look at the other one and see if it finished. Okay, so it says it succeeded. Let's go back to the library. And I will sort those by modified. I just clicked away from that screen. There. Look at that. So this is the one, this is stuff to sign, copy. So there is, remember that's all that fake text that I put in, in Word? And then it's sent for signature. And so there's my signature, Laura Rogers, and it put my email address underneath it. And then this is that extra log information. Remember when I checked yes to send me the, I think it was called the log. This is all the information that's going to tell me every single thing that happened with it, each person that it went to, when they viewed it, he signed it and everything. So the whole, um, the whole history of it. That's pretty neat. I think that deserves a golf clap. <laughs> All right, so um, it's pretty fun, huh? All right, now let's go try the other one. So I'll go to my policy form and I'll just call this the dress code. And the owner is gonna be me. Policy text is gonna be, I'm just gonna grab a bunch of that um, fake text here. Implementation date. Oh, I didn't, I don't think I put anything in there for the implementation date, but this would be just the date that you want your policy to go live. Maybe you could use that um, as maybe a due date for the signature or something like that. Okay, so I filled it out. That should trouble, that should trigger this flow. Let me close that one. Policy from template. Okay. Now, it should have sent me an email. Yeah, cool. Okay, so it sent me an email saying, please sign this dress code. So then I click to review and sign it. Oh, look at that. So it's got, it filled in with the fields from SharePoint, the dress code, IT is my department. Because I told it to use the department of the policy owner that I picked. So it's got the name, department, it, ooh, so this is kind of messy, the way it put the, um, that text field from SharePoint. Um, so, cause I had it as rich text instead of plain text, so I probably need to switch that to plain text. So then when I sign that, um, I kind of want to automatically put my job title, but. So I'll have to fix that, um, that SharePoint field to, uh, be plain text. Now for an actual company policy, they would probably want it to be rich text, but again, so that's just, that's fairly minor. Um, but so it created the agreement and sent it out. So I didn't do anything additional in here to do anything after. See, I'm not waiting for them to sign it or anything. So I didn't do anything additional in here to, to do with it. But, um, for that I could do, um, some of the same things that I did with the other one, I could say like get the status of the agreement. So it created the agreement and then I would do that uh, loop again. 
So do until, and then um, Adobe. Get the status of an agreement. Agreement ID is that one that I created. And then do until the status. Status. There. Is equal to. So, so one of you is asking why do I have to type sign like that? Is somebody filling, you know, typing the word sign? So that's just automatically what the status is when it comes from um, Adobe. So that's just what their built-in status is. So let's go look at that little log that I created. Remember I created that log that's telling me, it, and this is how I figured out what the status is supposed to be called in the first place. So remember I created just that little action that's writing straight to that SharePoint list, that test list, uh, which is where uh, test. Why aren't these in any kind of order? So see, it's like a log. See, it's out for signature was when I first created it and then signed. So it's going to say, it's going to check. It's going to see that it's out for signature. It's going to wait another few minutes. It's going to check again and it's going to see that it's out for signature. So that that um, little do until is just going to keep, it's just going to stay there, just keep checking every few minutes until they finally sign it. So that is what, um, you'll probably get a bunch of those out for signature. So that's just getting the status from Adobe just by writing it to a SharePoint list was how I figured out that's what it says right there. All right, so get the status of the agreement, do that until it's signed, and then I was just, you know, waiting a couple of minutes delay, you know, in the real world, you could probably like just wait 10 minutes. People don't sign things that fast. <laughs> All right. So then it waits. And then what would you want to do after that? So then you, you know, you might want to make it into a PDF. So then you could do that again, just like with the other one. That's my agreement ID. And then um, that's that attach audit report. That's what it was called, audit report. And then you could create the file in SharePoint. Um, I'm not gonna do that one again, but so then that way you could put the file, the PDF file back somewhere in SharePoint, or you could email the PDF to somebody. You could go um, send an email and creating my connection and then um, I'll just do that. I'll show you what that looks like. So I can send it to the, whoever that policy owner was and subject can be the name of the agreement. And thanks for signing. And then that attachment. So get the PDF is going to give me the content, the file content and the attachment name is where I need to put the agreement name dot PDF. All right, and then that would send that agreement PDF file to the policy owner if you wanted to. Oh, Stuart says I send the link to the signed PF PDF in a different request. Yeah, so hopefully that will help you all automate. Sorry about all the technical problems. Hopefully that will help you all automate your um, getting, if you have Adobe eSign, automating getting things signed. And if you don't have Adobe eSign, it, it might be worth it because signatures are just an extremely common thing that people want to do in, uh, in SharePoint and automating processes. And it, that is an official signature. And you're, uh, any other way is, um, you know, it's not, it's not an official Adobe eSign. So <laughs> thanks everybody for coming. What did you think? Any other, any last questions? Sorry, I went so over time. <laughs> Thanks y'all for sticking around. All right. See y'all next time. <laughs>